Welcome to Alaska Weather, a production of Alaska Public Media and the National Weather Service, Alaska Region. Produced and broadcast daily from the studios of KAKM, Alaska Weather provides complete forecasts, public, marine, and aviation for all of Alaska. Alaska Weather is made possible by the following sponsors. Find a living in fisheries. The UAS Fisheries Technology Program offers online study from anywhere in Alaska, plus labs and workshops in many Alaska towns. Is most likely a chum. Find your living without leaving where you are. Fisheries Technology from UAS. The National Weather Service. Hello, everyone, and thanks for joining us for this Friday's edition of Alaska Weather. I'm Dave Percy. On the uh, station times again, uh, APB 530 and 530 also for KUAC at 9.4, 360 North, 7.30, and 5 a.m. the next morning for Alaska Public Media and every day on YouTube, uh, posted by anywhere as soon as 7 to 8 p.m. And moving on to satellite imagery today, uh, pretty good storm here rolling into the central Aleutians, bringing uh, hurricane storm force winds to that uh, part of the world there. The front uh, rolling up here, approaching the Perbolos, bringing uh, windy conditions and rain into the eastern Aleutians. And then the old front here stalled out along the southwest coast, did edge its way, at least with clouds, in toward Bristol Bay and the peninsula here back up into St. Lawrence Island uh, being held back due to a strong high pressure aloft here right over interior Alaska. And then we've got moisture coming uh, northward there around that ridge and then back over the top, mostly just uh, high clouds there uh, coming into the northeast interior. Looks like uh, down into the Tanana Valley as well, but nothing but sunshine here south of the Alaska Range across the Copper Basin into the uh, Gulf of Alaska and over to the southeast coast. Uh, there is a upper trough here basically across the panhandle with the upper ridge over the interior. So uh, impulses are actually clouds coming southward and actually uh, some moisture here backing westward. Then that uh, allowing a few showers to cross the border there and uh, coming to the southern southeast coast. But rainfall amounts very light, just a few hundredths of an inch associated with that. Some areas not get anything at all and then you got more clearing on up to the north. And it looks like those showers will stick around tonight and then uh, maybe early tomorrow and then pull out of the area tomorrow afternoon through Sunday. Otherwise for today, uh, high pressure here, Gulf of Alaska at the surface, not so much over Northeast interior, but another center back there over uh, just south of Banks Island with uh, lots of sunshine through this area. And again, some high stuff dropping down into the Northeast interior and the scattered showers here over the southern southeast coast and then out west you can see a band of rain from the Alaska Peninsula here right up into St. Lawrence Island. Pretty gusty winds, 40 to 50 mile an hour wind gusts uh, this afternoon. Perbloffs ahead of that front and for the Alaska Peninsula Cold Bay right up along the southwest coast, Nunavak Island on up to uh, St. Lawrence Island. And rainfall amounts with this, uh, mostly this front here, about three quarters of an inch at King Cove, while Falls Pass had a little over half an inch, and Dutch Harbor had about a third of an inch. But ADAC, uh, with the main low center there, they picked up three quarters of an inch of rain. Otherwise, just a few hundreds falling here along the southwest coast. Uh, and then Savunga picked up about 16 hundredths of an inch. So really the rainfall, not really all that heavy and kind of in a narrow band here, but uh, it's stalled out and falling over uh, for quite some time here over roughly the same area. And looking at the forecast for tonight, uh, that front, they kind of merge here with the one along the coast. This one catches up and basically just have one precipitation field now from the Alaska Peninsula still back up to St. Lawrence Island, but edging inland here over the southwest, look for some light rain to possibly push into the uh, Bethel area back up toward Ammonic 
and uh, those locations and also uh, southeast flow here brought a few showers here to Kodiak Island. That's going to continue tonight and slip on up uh, into uh, northeast Bristol Bay in the southern part of the Alaska Range there. But the main precipitation will be back here to the west with uh, gale warnings out in front of the ahead of the front here. But uh, lightening up now for the eastern Aleutians with uh, just some scattered showers there. Winds more westerly now, the low center pulling up into the Bering Sea, so the gradient relaxing now along the Aleutian chain. So winds coming down and a few scattered showers. No change over the interior. Uh, basically cloud free except for some variable high clouds up here over the northeast and then the increase back here to the southwest. Look for some areas of low clouds and fog. Patchy up along the central and eastern Arctic coast. That should be good for some IFR up there tonight. But uh, mostly clear skies right down in the Gulf of Alaska and uh, maybe some clouds pushing east of the Alaska range. That's just a possibility. And showers uh, still a threat there over the southern southeast coast. Again, upper trough right through this area. The axis now right about through here. So on the uh, north side of that, that easterly flow, northeast flow, keeps the threat going tonight and also into early tomorrow, but those should uh, move out and end by tomorrow afternoon. So increasing clearing across the southeast coast there with light winds, more sunshine. Another day like today and yesterday here from the Prince William Sound area in the North Gulf Coast through much of the interior, right up to the eastern Arctic coast. Again, that's where you may pick up some patchy fog, but southeast wind should uh, keep it VFR there on the west side. And uh, now the showery acti shower activity here uh, continues around Kodiak, becomes a little more extensive and moves eastward. So some light precipitation could show up on the southern side, southern coast of the Kenai Peninsula there. Possibly Seldovia could get a few sprinkles, Homer probably not. A little more likely here across the inlet, Kamishak Bay area up to uh, Port Allsworth. And then the main rain here associated with the front along with the wind, uh, 45 knot winds in the forecast here across Bristol Bay tomorrow with this uh, lighter back to the west, wind and rain right up at St. Lawrence Island and the low center continuing to pull northward here over the northwest bearing now. So look for lighter winds here across the Aleutians and uh, showers, occasional showers uh, coming uh, with a couple of troughs out there. Otherwise, uh, high pressure here holding but the entire system gradually moving eastward, both at the surface and the loft. So on Saturday night and Sunday, that's going to allow uh, this front to push eastward a little bit more. Although uh, surface high holds here over south central Alaska, look for uh, some rain in Kodiak Island, but this portion of the front right through here really weakening, falling apart, really just areas of light rain or showers. And that's all about associated with it here at this point for Sunday afternoon and uh, a little bit of rain for the uh, Bering Strait area, lifting north of the St. Lawrence Island area in the afternoon as that uh, low center or wave along the front tracks northwestward. So it looks like a pretty good day here across Bristol Bay with uh, mostly sunny skies, light winds, Alaska Peninsula, same forecast, eastern Aleutians, a lot less wind, probably shower free and sunshine here, North Slope, Brooks Range, right through the central and eastern interior again down to the North Gulf Coast and should be uh, mostly sunny with no showers there for the panhandle with a 1,023 millibar high center, both east and west. Uh, nothing in the way of any precipitation will be coming into there at least Sunday and possibly even Monday as well. Out to the west, uh, next system here pushing into the western Aleutians with uh, possible increasing gales there. There probably will be gale force winds coming in Sunday and Sunday afternoon here with the rain spreading eastward to about ADAC. Temperatures this afternoon across the Panhandle, uh, mostly in the 50s, all in the 50s here that's plotted with 57 at Sitka, 53 in Craig. State Capital at 52 this afternoon, 54 Yakutat, lower to mid 50s, Prince William Sound, North Gulf Coast of Seward at 54, 51 in Kenai and upper 40s, lower 50s, Northern Cook Inlet, Madnuska, Susitna Valley, Big Lake 51 this afternoon, up otherwise 40s, Copper River Basin, 40s, Tanana Valley, 47 at Fairbanks, uh, just 30 this afternoon at Fort Yukon and 38 at Bettles, upper 20s, lower 30s for the Brooks Range, North Slope and the Arctic Coast. Uh, milder though here on the west side, 
Warming into the mid 40s along the northwest coast with uh, 47 at Deering. 45 Shishmaref, same thing at Nome. Upper 40s here over the uh, Yukon Cuscombe Delta area is actually mid 50s out that way with McGrath at 44 degrees today and uh, Sparavon had 49. Upper 40s for the Pribilofs, lower 50s along the coast, mid 50s Alaska Peninsula, cooler 40s out over the Aleutians. And the forecast lows for tonight, uh, teens here through the eastern interior, Copper River Basin right up into the Brooks Range with 20s north slope in the Arctic coast, warmer out west with upper 30s to lower 40s and right around 50 for the lows tonight for the Alaska Peninsula. Highs for tomorrow, uh, 30s to lower 40s, Copper River Basin, upper 40s for the Tanana Valley. That extends right out to the southwest coast there, mid 50s, Bristol Bay and the Alaska Peninsula, mid 30s for the Arctic coast and North Slope and right around 50, maybe in the lower 50s for the Panhandle and about the same out over the Aleutians. Flying weather tomorrow again, uh, good VFR here, Brooks Range southward, eastward across the Panhandle. Uh, look for areas of, mar or of IFR possible there along mostly the central and eastern Arctic coast, but VFR here down through the Bering Strait. Then you hit the marginal stuff there for St. Lawrence Island with the IFR right on its heels, extending southeastward there along the coastline. And uh, see this area lifting north now, so that uh, puts the Aleutians into a VFR zone, which uh, Last through tomorrow and even expands northward across the Pribilofs with the IFR pulling back to the northwest. Weakening front here along the coast. So IFR restricted around St. Lawrence Island and on the south side of the Alaska Peninsula with just some marginal VFR left behind. It's coming up toward Kodiak Island. Good VFR continues in the interior and uh, low clouds, patchy fog could keep some IFR in areas along the Arctic coast. Passes all VFR once again and uh, probably will be through the weekend. VFR Lake Clark and Merrill, uh, rainy VFR, windy same forecast, and Isabel wide open, Mentasta, Tanita, ceilings visibility is unlimited for most of these, Chilkoot and White VFR. Freezing levels again, upper high pressure over the interior, that's where the freezing levels are the highest with 8,000 feet, covering much of interior Alaska, some uh, colder air out here just west of the Pribilofs down to 2,000 feet, and then that upper level trough and that northerly flow keeping 2,000 feet here right along the southeast coast. And looking at icing along that front as it pushes in, areas of light to isolated moderate rime about above about 8,000 feet here for the Alaska Peninsula up along the southwest coast and to St. Lawrence Island. This would be the only area that any icing possibly could occur, just areas of possible there, really nothing that would be that severe. And looking at the jet stream, high pressure aloft holding over interior Alaska again. Trough out here centered uh, right about in this location, but a deep trough down here south of the Aleutians. And this is the one that's still keeping that shower threat in over the southeast coast, but the entire pattern shifting eastward. So again, by tomorrow afternoon, you'll be just into this northerly dry flow there over the panhandle. And that's going to allow this jet to edge its way eastward, but the whole pattern will be weakening. And then for 9,000 feet on the wind, southeasterlies, 50 or 45 to 55 knots here, Alaska Peninsula, Bristol Bay tomorrow, right in across the southwest interior, 30 knots for eastern Norton Sound, and diminishing winds here over the southwest Bering Sea. Again, the uh, stronger winds lifting northward with that low center and the uh, southeast coast. Uh, offshore flow at about 15 and uh, very light winds over the eastern interior. 3,000 foot wind flow showing uh, light winds now showing up kind of still an offshore flow so with that upper trough pulling out you'll be uh, into the clear weather there for tomorrow afternoon through Sunday and otherwise uh, light winds north Gulf Coast a little bit uh, breezy here over the central interior 15 to 25 knots and then a big increase as you get out toward the coastline, 45 to 50 knots, St. Lawrence Island, right down into Bristol Bay across the Aleutian Range southwest of Kodiak. Lighter winds more southwesterly out toward the uh, Fox Islands and uh, 25 to 35 knot winds from the west across the Aleutians. For turbulence uh, with those winds could be possibly severe here, especially for small aircraft from the Aleutian Range right up across Bristol Bay to the southwest mountains there and then occasional moderate chop, Kodiak Island, northwest 
into uh, the Seward Peninsula, St. Lawrence Island, but uh, diminishing now for the Perblofs. Uh, pretty light, if none at all, forecast for the Aleutians, except uh, maybe a little bit of chop out west. And after the break of hangar flying, I'll return with a look at the ice edge and the marine forecasts. Good evening, everybody. I'm Mary O'Connor. Thank you to Alaska Public Media, KAKM, the Alaskan Aviation Safety Foundation, and the National Institute for Occupational Safety and Health for allowing me to bring you hangar flying. And of course, thanks to the, our audience for tuning in. This evening, we are pleased to have on our show Christy Warden, who is the Deputy Division Manager, Airports Division of the Federal Aviation Administration's Alaska Region. Christy, welcome to our program. Thank you very much, Mary. Great to be here. Thank you. So your division works to provide the guidance and leadership for the planning, development, and operation of the Alaska airport system. Sure, we sure do. And, and from a federal perspective, the Federal Aviation Administration, we provide essential funding to the airport owner, to the airport operator, whom we refer to as the airport sponsor, to maintain all of the public use, publicly owned airports uh, consistent with our guidance and our federal regulations. So you're part of that unseen force that keeps the airport safe, although people don't necessarily see the FAA out there working on the airports. I think, I, of course you're right, and I think one of the greatest roles we play is the airport, the airport facilitator. We facilitate the practicalities of, of helping a sponsor operate a, an airport not only operate it from a very safe and very efficient perspective, but most importantly, from a capital development perspective. We provide federal funding for capital developments, infrastructure projects, air side, land side, uh, all of it capital development projects, and these are very important as compared to operations funding, which the sponsor provides. Uh, but our, our focus, our contribution is on the capital improvement side. And how many airports in the Alaska region are you responsible for helping uh, the sponsors with? Right now it's 259 airports, and these are what we call NIPIUS member airports, National Plan of Integrated Airport Systems. And to the layperson, that's a public use, publicly owned airport typically, that is a NIPIUS member airport that we FAA recognize as an obligated airport. So we provide funding, federal funding, to the airport sponsor to operate, or excuse me, for capital developments at that airport. Uh, when everyone purchases an airline ticket, we all pay federal excise tax, 7.5% federal excise tax. And that funding, along with some other funding in terms of segment fees, in terms of some other uh, taxes on the ticket, go into the Aviation Trust Fund. And as airports division, we are authorized by Congress, typically annually or a couple of times annually, to reach into the trust fund to pull out funding for capital development, capital improvements at airports. We pass that funding on to eligible and recognized airport sponsors to implement projects that we and they agree are essential for the development of the airport, for the capital development and the infrastructure. Uh, we go through a long project vetting process, a planning process, a multi-year process, where we partner really with the sponsor to identify what those needs might be, make sure that they meet our eligibility and our justification criteria, and then enable the sponsor to execute those projects with our federal funding. But it's definitely a partnership relationship. It's not the FAA telling them what they have to do other than meeting, say, minimum standards. There's some give and take there. Partnership is key. It's essential. Uh, we, of course, do not operate the airports. We're not in the business. We're very much in the development business. So we will partner with the sponsors and help them take on that role exactly as, as you have uh, stated. Yes, we have guidelines. We have regulations. We have standards. We have safety criteria. We have other criteria and regulations that our sponsors adhere to. But it's very much a partnership, and that's something that our office takes very seriously. 
Speaking of your office, how many people work in the airports division with the Alaska region? There are 20 of us in the office. Uh, nationwide, there are about 580 airports employees within the FAA, 20 in this region, and we are one of nine regions plus a headquarters. So that's pretty small to get a lot of work done. It sure is. Uh, we're flowing approximately $200 million a year of capital development funding for our NIPIAS member airports to the sponsors. We're doing that with 20 staff, but not every one of those 20 staff does solely capital development or solely funding functions. We are running six programs in that office. We definitely have our financial uh, areas, our airport improvement program, our passenger facility charge program. Uh, we also have the, the safety and standards side of the house, the part 139, the airport certification and safety inspection program uh, with our, our staff, our specialists. We also have airport compliance. That's an essential part of our sponsors operating uh, consistent with our regulations. We have a robust environmental management program uh, for all of our environmental concerns. So we've got many programs going on in the office all at once with our 20 folks. Wow, that's really impressive. I have learned so much. Christy, it's been a pleasure having you on our program. We have to wrap it up right now, right. but we look forward to having you back on our next show and learning more about what you do. Thank you very much, Mary, thanks. Thank you. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for watching Hangar Flying, and next time you buy an airline ticket, I hope this helps you understand where some of that tax money is going. Fly safely. Welcome back. See ice analysis for uh, today, Friday, still showing this area of uh, low concentration ice off the coast there and with the uh, easterly winds coming into the picture and picking up speed a little bit here over the weekend let's expect uh, it only falls that this might drift westward again uh, throughout the weekend and in the first of next week and that's about it as far as any changes go for the uh, panhandle inside waters Lynn Canal northern Lynn Canal down across Stevens Passage north 20 knots four foot seas Light winds for Clarence Strait. Out along the coast, all easterly tomorrow, uh, 10 to 15 knots. So seas down to 5 to 6 feet. And then for Sunday, uh, high pressure here off the coast. Uh, more northerly winds just about everywhere. On the light side, 10 to 15 here over the inside waters. Seas 2 to 3 feet there. And northerly for most of the coast here at 10 to 15 with 4 to 6 foot seas. Up on the north there, just uh, light variable winds with three foot seas. For Prince William Sound and the North Gulf Coast, all variable at 10 knots in the forecast for the first day of the weekend. Three foot seas out here along the North Gulf Coast and light variable winds north of the Forelands here for Cook Inlet, uh, East 15. And then small craft advisories, Kamishak Bay through Shelikoff Strait, Southeast 30 there for the east side of Kodiak Island. And that holds uh, through Sunday as well, those 14 foot seas. And east 25 for the Barren Islands, small craft advisories, east winds 30 knots for Kamishak Bay. And uh, down across Silikoff Strait, east at 25. Uh, North Gulf Coast, still pretty light and variable, as well as Prince William Sound under high pressure. For Bristol Bay, again, uh, kind of that wave and low center riding up along the frontal boundary there. So look for some good gales, 45 knots out of the southeast. 11 foot seas, 40 knots here southwest to Kodiak Island to Castle Cape, and small craft advisories south to southeast release 25 to 30 knots for the Alaska Peninsula. And then on Sunday, much lighter winds, southeast 15 for the peninsula, sea 7 to 11 feet, east 25 southwest of Kodiak Island, uh, seas 12 feet there, but lighter winds, 15 to 20 knots for Bristol Bay. And for the uh, Fox Islands tomorrow, uh, southwest. 20 knots and it picks up to uh, west southwesterly at about 25 out to the central Aleutians and then 30 to uh, actually 35 knot wind so some gales out here uh, west of uh, Amchitka Island and then for Sunday those swing around to the southeast and actually pick up here 35 to 40 knot winds across the western Aleutians south 25 to 30 for the central Aleutian areas and then for uh, the eastern side, we've got southwest 10 to 20 knots with uh, 9 to 13 foot seas. 
For the southwest coast, gales tomorrow, 35 to 40 knots southeasterlies, turn easterly there for St. Lawrence Island. Storm warnings for the northern Bering Sea, east of 50 knots, 25 foot sea. Small craft advisories are the peripheral off, so those seas up to 17 feet. And for Sunday, south 25, southeast 25 here, so coming down there for the northern Bering Sea, southeast 25 to 30 there from Nunavak Island to St. Lawrence Island, more southerly and lighter there for uh, the southwest coast here. And for the Arctic coast, uh, easterlies 20 to 25 knots uh, along the entire coastline, and then it picks up to 30 knots there from Cape Thompson to Wales. And then on Sunday, uh, 25 to 30 knot winds continue here from the east southeast from Wales to Cape Beaufort. Then it's due easterly at 25, six to eight foot seas for the remainder of the coast. And looking at tonight's weather again, uh, no change over the interior. Uh, again, some lingering clouds up through the northeast there, but no precipitation. Patchy fog, low clouds. That'll make for some IFR in areas along the central and eastern Arctic coast. And showers continue to be a threat here with an upper trough over the southern southeast coast. Light showers, nothing really heavy at all. And then uh, front edging its way eastward here, increasing the wind or keeping it windy with rain along the southwest coast of the Alaska Peninsula up to St. Lawrence Island. And the low center lifting northward, so conditions improving across the Aleutians. And that pattern continues through tomorrow as well. This front kind of stuck out here into the west due to the high pressure holding over the interior. A few showers around Kodiak Island. Sunshine, much of interior Alaska, down into the panhandle. Again, these showers should be over tomorrow afternoon, which will lead to a sunny day there on Sunday with light winds, high pressure dominating the area, as well as most of interior Alaska. However, this weakening front edges its way into the southwest here with just some areas of light rain or scattered showers. A little more continuous for Kodiak and then also back up here across uh, St. Lawrence Island, lifting into the western Seward Peninsula with a breezier condition. Well, have a great weekend and we'll see you again tomorrow. These forecasts are to be used for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go flying. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbor master before you go boating. Alaska weather is made possible by the following sponsors. The National Weather Service.